So first, let's uh, see how we can set up these data sets and how we can set up these data analysis. And this lesson actually focuses on where this data comes from and what do we need to do to get these uh, short read sequencing um, data and to um, use these short read sequencing data to, uh, to arrive at the taxonomic table and etc. Et so that is uh, what this one focuses on first primarily uh, in this uh, um, in, uh, in this steps to download data. And once you have obtained at this table, we can actually perform this uh, downstream analysis of this um, using data to pipeline. And we can set up these analysis in, in the, the server also. And this and our uh, part of this data or curated part or portion of this data is included as a demo pipeline in the server, the bioinfo server, let this complete loading and it can be accessed under this uh, Amplicon 16S or 18S sequencing in the metagenomics section. So if you have login credentials to server, uh, Tiba Info server, irrespective of your subscription pattern or subscription model, you can access all of the demo pipelines. And this demo pipeline can be accessed by these using these drop down uh, um, button or clicking option. And in this, we can see, uh, Okay, I think it's in the red syndrome is here. Yeah, red syndrome is in time, but um, I will I will generally show you how to uh, set up a data to pipeline, uh, not for the red syndrome, but for the different projects. So we start with the analysis part and the input files are actually um, already uploaded and we have, uh, you can access them from here. And once you start, we actually perform some quality control for our uh, files. And then we uh, count them or we use the um, data to uh, processes to count, to merge, and to cluster these uh, uh, OTGs. That's what we will do. And once this has been done, we can actually remove um, more than one OTU uh, clustered as, or uh, more than one type of OTUs clustered into one cluster that are chimeras. And we can then use these OTU sequences to um, explore the Silva database or uh, any other database to assign uh, tax. Then we can use a uh, uh, neighbor joining algorithm to develop phylogenetics of these OTUs, which is one of the key uh, steps in understanding or in uh, exploring or characterizing the diversity of these OTUs or these samples. And then we can perform data visualization. Then we can end the pipeline. So once you build this pipeline for the analysis and in any method data to or kind to, you will get access to all the output files that you can download and you can visualize and you can explore. And what to explore and what to perform and what are the analysis to focus and what are the results to be uh, identified and implicated can be uh, thoroughly uh, read and understood from the associated resources that we are linking to uh, during each and every session of the program. So I want to show you some of the uh, uh, visualization that we actually show. And this is the abundance plot that you will uh, often see or often notice in microbiome or metagenomics related publication. I think we should, yes, exactly, yeah. And uh, we, this is an interactive abundance plot. We can quickly check uh, which uh, uh, taxa of bacteria is this, does this uh, specific section. And we see some uh, difference in the abundance level of this bacteria IDTs for different samples that can, can be related to their biological condition or phenotypic reaction. And this uh, specific plot, which is not a proportional plot, which is a raw abundance plot and a relative abundance, uh, relative proportional abundance plot can be used to understand uh, the proportional abundance of several different microbial population or different samples. So this project also, I think, gives you uh, option to um, ways to run the pipeline. I think in the, uh, yes, 
it gives the same result, same uh, discusses the same thing here. Here is where you can actually uh, access the pipeline that we are we actually set up for the uh, lesson that we focuses on focus on right. It's the same uh, data to pipeline, but for the uh, uh, it's not for the red syndrome. No? It's for different pipelines. Actually. Okay, we'll check that. So uh, I wanted to show you that this proportional plot will help us. Uh, clear some of the hypothesis that we generally uh, develop once seeing the non-proportional or uh, absolute uh, abundance plot. Now, if we see this uh, level of the bacterial identities in these three samples, they are absolutely identical uh, because it has been uh, scaled up or it has been normalized across the different samples. That's what I wanted to show you. So, this uh, uh, interactive uh, visualization will help uh, Abundance level of our uh, abundance level of microbial community from our sample, and in order to perform more uh, specific analysis, that we will also uh, briefly and an environment like R or Python to uh, do the, uh, perform that analysis. Go to the server, and that can be accessed again as a demo pipeline under the Chime section of the metagenomics uh, uh, part, right in this. Uh, Time. We see that the red syndrome project is here. We can go and set up this analysis quickly. So Kaim adds some more uh, steps to process and pre-process the data and post-process the data into Kaim objects before applying data to pipeline into that or data to analysis into that into our data, right? And it does. It performs all the steps that we do in the data too, uh, but it gives us some more options or more options to uh, perform some quality visualization. Once this is done, and the details for these steps are all included in the associated publications, uh, not publication, no, in the associated resources. Go. So when you sign up for this program, you will get access to, uh, okay, what happened here? Can you see my screen? It's a little bit. Yes, sir, the screen is visible, just it's black. Blacked out, right? Yeah, for some reasons it is, yeah, for some reasons it is. Okay, let me start over again. In order to access the dashboard or analyzing this data or changing the key parameters of this data uh, during visualization process so that we can perform this analysis without um, rerunning the pipeline or without any, without resorting to any code-based methods, which we will also explore. Uh, option is available for KIME and uh, for most of the pipelines that you are going to set up in the Taubot BioInfo server. So the process involves in uh, selecting the next available or choosing uh, one of the next available uh, analysis options that are highlighted when you select the previous ones. So since this is a demo pipeline, it's, it's only act letting me select uh, the path with which we have set up the pipeline. And in reality, when you select or when you opt for these analysis methods, when you select one of these uh, options or al algorithms, then it's going to give you all the, or uh, it's going to highlight all possible route that you can take. So why should I say that? Uh, you can design your analysis methods or sequences depending upon the data, depending upon the uh, hypothesis that you are actually testing. So this external dashboard will give you options like let it load, uh, options like changing the taxonomic level of your relative abundance plot, right? So in the interactive visualization plot, the taxonomic level is fixed. Once we have, uh, when we are running the pipeline or when we are accessing the pipeline, setting up the pipeline, here you can change that. 
from the family level, you can change that to phylum level and uh, explore their informative uh, level of informativeness, right? Uh, look at this, the phylum level is not very informative because it is most of them are actually populated by firmicutes and uh, uh, the best level at which we can study this is at the genus or family level. Genus could be too varied and it can have uh, several of the uh, not applicable um, or unknown uh, resources in them. For example, un unknown or uncultured organisms or other organisms here as grouped by these purple cases, right? They are all other which are unclassified a genus. So uh, one level. Are related to uh, um, uh, red syndrome or not from the disease that is the host disease yes here and then it is going to update by itself and then you can explore for them for their uh, separation for their uh, distribution so again in the diversity plot you can check uh, different categories or different uh, annotations of your of your samples here I'm focused, I'm focused on red syndrome. You can also change this up by uh, selecting, for example, body mass index, body mass index, et cetera, et cetera, that we want to select. So uh, this dashboard gives you uh, freedom and flexibility to change the annotation, to change the grouping level, and to change the um, uh, display of the, uh, of the associated plots that, uh, um, that are not possible in the, um, in the interactive platform or that are that are very helpful when you are opting for or when, when we want to understand uh, metagenomics data analysis using a code-free uh, option. And this can also be performed using R as a um, tool for analysis. And that is actually given in, the, in this project 13, which, is, uh, uh, um, which explores the role of high fat diet and obesity using model system like mouse, right? Um, when we go back to my uh, keynote, Let's see. Uh, can you see my screen? Sir, it's loading. It's not visible yet. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Now it's visible. Yeah. Right. Uh, the use the helpful uh, the hel uh, the advantage of using a model system to understand microbial uh, the effect of microbial immunity and their abundance level on several different uh, uh, aspects is actually that we can use. Um, uh, specific antibiotics to completely reduce or completely nullify the existing bacterial load in the model system, which is not possible for human samples. So we can take a mouse model, for example, and then completely uh, devoid that mouse model for, uh, for any uh, trace of uh, microbial community in their gut, and then load them up with uh, specific we can um, process at the end of uh, observation process and quantify their abundance level. That is what is actually done in this specific project. So they take the mouse samples and for completely cleaned up mouse, they give the mouse um, uh, microbial community that is developed or that is built or that is actually uh, um, yeah, uh, developed for different mouse that takes high fat diet. And for another mouse, microbial uh, um, samples from micro samples from another mouse that take normal uh, diet. So, and the behavioral changes for mouse that received microbial transplantation, community transplantation from high fat diet fed mouse and um, compared it to the microbial uh, transplantation mouse, transplanted mouse that received uh, transplantation from a normal diet mouse and their behavioral dis, um, uh, dif uh, differences are actually studied after a given number of time and that are actually uh, explored in this specific um, project. So, on uh, uh, this downstream analysis, which takes the tables or which takes uh, uh, the abundance table, which takes the taxonomic table, and uh, which also uh, takes a sample uh, sample annotation, and then we can perform downstream analysis using R and using a package that we will definitely explore during the program that um, 
uh, and their usage in using phyllosic package, right? In this phyllosic package, we can we can uh, bundle up this abundance table and this uh, this taxonomic information and this annotation information into one object. And this one object is what has been repeatedly being used to study, for example, uh, uh, to measure the diversity across different sample or across groups of sample in terms of alpha diversity or in terms of beta diversity that can also be uh, studied, right? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is simply the, um, the NMDS plot to show their differences uh, using Bray distance methods and some more uh, phylogeny-based distance methods like uh, Unifract. And these ones are also explored and given uh, detailed account of how to perform this analysis using R as a tool for performing this analysis. This gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of the number of samples to analyze, in terms of what are the distance methods that you can choose to uh, analyze and what is, uh, visualization options like PCOA, NMDS, or U, uh, UMAP to uh, use to visualize your samples. So, um, and uh, it also gives you a lot of freedom in, in terms of grouping of samples according to phyla, kingdom, and et cetera. Or you can also, for example, um, uh, restrict your analysis to top 25 OTUs or top 50, depending upon their abundance levels or depending upon their diversity levels in this case. So that can also be studied. So uh, this uh, RS tool for downstream analysis gives you all the codes for performing this analysis. And it also gives you a portion where you can try your knowledge of uh, performing this analysis from the previous two resources, right? It gives you, or this console is a uh, is, a, is an R console that is loaded at the back end and you can perform all the analysis given in these measures of diversity or given in these sections. Mm, I use these to uh, perform the analysis and we have given you small uh, assignments and, and challenges and these challenges can be accessed from lesson six. This is a continuation of lesson six. So we go back to lesson six quickly, which focuses on how to set up these downstream analysis in PyloSeq environment. Down, down. Yes, in uh, try it yourself section. So we give options or we give uh, links to the input table. And then we actually uh, leave out some of the key portions of the syntax. For example, here, this is left out free or left out uh, incomplete so that you can refer or you can base on your understanding of how this is performed complete this uh, analysis in this console and gain uh, a good feedback about, uh, for your own understanding uh, for this uh, code base lessons. So uh, similar analysis is also, perform, uh, is also um, possible in Python and more details are actually available in uh, other uh, associated resources. And also in, uh, we will explore Python's option to perform this analysis in the program also.